Well, in studio with us for the next hour is the one, the only, G. Edward Griffin, author of The Creature from Jekyll Island, filmmaker, fighting the globalists for more than 40 years. He's here in Austin to give several speeches. We'll tell you about that before he leaves us. And we apologize. We have to get Lord Moncton on with him for about five, ten minutes. It's the only time Lord Moncton can do it. He was on with us for a full hour or more than an hour uh, just the other day. Uh, but there has been a new, new event where Brown Shirt Youth Corps from the Rockefeller Foundation and, of course, the George Soros-funded groups, they're admittedly with them, came and took over his speech today, completely shut it down. Didn't go like we are changing, and ask questions in the press conference and then drug out. No, they just came and took over and no one could stop them because Lord Moncton doesn't have all the big, you know, oil company security people like Al Gore does, who owns, by the way, Occidental Petroleum and is one of the biggest people cutting down the rainforest. But that's how this scam works. So that is coming up here in the next uh, 10 minutes. Lord Moncton should be should be joining us. If not, it'll be in the next hour. Uh, but G. Edward Griffin, I, I feel like I know you so well. This is, I believe, the first time that we've met in person, unless my memory fails me. It is great to have you sitting here in the flesh. Well, thank you. It's, it's good to be here, Alex. Yeah, we, we did meet once before. In fact, I was on your show when you had the old facility. That's right. You were in studio before. <laughs> yes. I don't know I was having this deja vu moment. No, no. I just watched so much video. I get to where I can't tell anymore. Right. I apologize. We have met. Well, it's good to be here. Well met, my friend. Yes, indeed. And I, I really like your studio. I and understand you're doing so well. And that it's so encouraging because while the earth seems to be falling apart, you're one of the bright hopes out there. Well, we're, we're small, but uh, we're, we're a fly on the... End of the New World Order's behind, but we're but, but we're irritating them. It's more like a, a like a mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're injecting cyanide into their lies. Yes. Hey, would you like to bow down to Al Gore? Newsweek, the Earth's prophet, the thinking man's thinking man. Oh, how did they spell that? <laughs> I would have spelled it differently. <laughs> oh, how would you spell it? With an S and a T. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. It's amazing how how the media can. Um, Mythalize uh, things like that. Uh, I, I think Al Gore has lost his um, his charm. I think he's lost a lot of the aura of being infallible. And of course, he has a loyal following. You can't beat that. They'll they'll follow him right over the edge of the earth if necessary. But uh, I think most of the people were sort of in that gray middle zone where they weren't sure whether there was global warming or not. But uh, since uh, Al Gore was saying there was, they went with it. Now they know that this whole climate gate thing is uh, blowing all of that apart. So. I think progress is being made. That's the bottom line. Absolutely. G. Edward Griffin with us in studio. Lord Moncton coming up to pop in in a little while with us. Uh, the climate gate and, and, and now the leaked Danish text, the actual treaty that the U.S. and others wanted to sign, doubles or right at doubles the amount of taxes on the third world. And it's meant to destroy their development. All these major newspapers like the Financial Post calling for, quote, Chinese style global authority to enforce one child policy. Isn't that from your research and give us your take on it, the heart of what this is really all about? I think it's very close to the heart. Yeah, it's not only the control of the population and uh, reproductive rates, but it's the control of all aspects of human endeavor. And, you know, it's the old story. Your listeners know it so well, Alex, that uh, in order to convince the people of the world that they should give up their freedom and they should accept these draconian measures over their lives, you have to scare them. You have to convince them that there's something very terrible going to happen, either terrorism or crime or drugs or uh, overpopulation or whatever it is, a destruction of the of the planet, so that people will be so grateful when these politicians come along and propose various types of legislation that's going to take away their freedom, but they say, don't worry about your freedom, we're going to save your life, we're going to save the planet. You know, it, it's the old game. It's been going on and on for almost a 100 years. You know, reading the treaty, which I have here in front of me, they state global government, Von Rompuy, the head of the EU, says it's world government, Ban Ki-moon, head of the UN, Secretary General, writes editorials saying it's world government. Uh, they're announcing that the Copenhagen Global Treaty, a, a, a tax on all financial transactions, a 2% tax on the GDP off the top, taxes on all fuel. They admit this will devastate the third world and that they actually want to shut down their development, which will actually make them continue to have all these children. All the studies show once you're industrialized, you start having uh, less children than you did before, and the replacement rate drops to 1.3 children uh, instead of uh, more than two children per, per group of adults. Well, I think the mistake is made when 
when the public gives credence to uh, the motives of what these people are doing, they're always saying they're going to uh, control the birth rate in order to uh, to decrease the population explosion. And supposedly, you know, this is for the benefit of mankind. Uh, they're going to control us in this way or that way. And it's always for the benefit of mankind. It's for our own good, supposedly. But in reality, uh, we shouldn't give them credence for that because that's never been their motive. Uh, their motive is really just raw control over human beings. So uh, I don't think it uh, makes much sense to to listen to what these people are saying. They're always uh, distorting the truth. So uh, what more can I say on that? Uh, uh, this is sort of like preaching to the choir here. Uh, I think that uh, your listeners certainly know that very well. But uh, what can I say uh, in addition to that, that uh, we, we have to really think about the master plan behind all of this. And the master plan really has nothing to do with, with controlling the temperature or climate control or, or uh, preventing overpopulation or none of that. That's just uh, smokescreen. That's just propaganda to make us think that they're good guys and they're really looking out for us. Well, the colonial, neo-colonial system of the IMF and World Bank coming in that you talk about so much, loaning our tax money at loan sharking rates where Nigeria gets a billion dollar loan and today they've paid over 60 billion back on that one billion. Uh, the, the IMF and World Bank don't want to help the third world, and they've sold this, oh, global taxes on all carbon to save the third world, and they've told the liberals it's to help the Africans and the Latin Americans, when in truth it will admittedly starve even more people. Of course, that's what I'm saying. That, that you, you can't listen to what these people are saying uh, their motives are. They really want control. That's what it's all about. When will the American people wake up to the fact that these leaders, both national and international, have one thing in mind, and only one thing, and that's control over human beings. That's the bottom line, and all this other talk is nonsense. Tell us about what you're doing in Austin, and then I want to get into the treaty more, the, the establishment of world government, how long they've been working at this, and where you think they are in this plan, because it seems that they're trying to accelerate their program because so many people are waking up to them. Uh, but I want to get your take on that. But tell us about some of the events you're going to be holding here in Austin. Well, I'm here, uh, Alex, and thanks for asking me on that. I'm here to do a seminar. We call it a crash course on money. And uh, it, just as the name suggests, it has two meanings for the word crash. It's a crash course in the sense that it's, it's condensed, is we do it all in one day from uh, 9 a.m. till 8 p.m. It's all done. So it's a crash course. But also it's based on the recognition that we're in a crash economy. And people particularly want to know not just about money, but how to protect the money they already have from being confiscated through inflation, what kind of investments to make, if any, are good investments, and uh, you know how to get out of debt and all the various aspects of how to protect yourselves. And also we're b taking a look at the long-term strategies of how to protect your children and your grandchildren. So we're not just focused on the money side of it, but the system side of it. We believe very firmly that if you don't preserve the system, uh, it won't make any difference because you won't have any money anyway. So that's what we're doing. It's a crash course on money. And I, I hope that if anybody's interested in hearing my views on that, they'll come out. It's being held on Saturday right here in uh, in Austin at, uh, let's see, it's at the Marriott, uh, maybe... Um, during the break, I can get my assistant to give me the address and all that. But it, uh, Folks can also just go to your website. Oh, that's the better way, yes. Go right to realityzone.com, and when they get to the landing page, there will be a big banner talking about the crash course. Great, and we're going to talk about your event you've got coming up tonight in just a moment. Uh, but we now turn uh, in just a moment to Lord Christopher Moncton. And while he's speaking, we're going to show you some video without the audio uh, of uh, the disruptors. Now, the difference is with the Tea Parties and We Are Change, they go to Al Gore events, buy a book, go up and say, sir, what about climate gate? What about you lying about carbon dioxide rising and then temperatures rising when it's actually opposite? Sir, what about you making all this money off of this? And then they get drug out. At this event in Copenhagen, Lord Christopher Monckton, one of the chief people exposing the man-made climate fraud, uh, had one of their little events. This is David having an event against Goliath. Uh, groups funded by George Soros, we have an article about this at PrisonPlanet.com, Brown Shirt Youth Corps Invade Moncton's Speech. And uh, we have the uh, article here with the groups uh, that are funded by Soros and the Rockefellers and others uh, and by the U.N. there taking over, not letting him have a speech. And, of course, 
Moncton isn't funded by the powers that be, so he didn't have thugs there to beat everyone up and drag them off. So they just took it over, showing how they're a group of jackboots. And now we have the National Post calling for a planetary regime for one-child policy. They admit cutting off the food will reduce population. That is the goal. So hence, these are Nazis. Joining us is Lord Christopher Moncton. Thank you for coming on today, sir.